another episode of the NBA preview and we're now at the six seeds. At six in the east I have the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks finished last season with 41 wins and 41 losses and ended up in the sixth seed. They lost in the first round to the Chicago Bulls in six games. The best results the Bucks have had came in 1971 when they won the NBA championship only three years after the founding of the Milwaukee Bucks. They were led by Oscar Robertson and Lou Al Cinder, who a day after the title changed his name to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Let's see the moves the Bucks made this summer. They drafted Rashawn Wan at 17 in the draft. All the players they got were Greg Monroe, Chris Copeland and Gravis Vasquez. Players they lost were Sasa Pachulia, Jared Dudley and Ersan Ilyasova. The thing that clearly stands out is that they got a quality center in Greg Monroe. Let's check out the team rotation. At center they have their new addition Greg Monroe. The Bucks lacked scoring inside and Greg will be able to fill that void to a certain extent. He's also a very good rebounder and that will help the Bucks who are 24th in the league in rebounding. Only thing that could hurt them is that he's not much of a shot blocker but he takes up space in the paint. He'll be backed up by John Hansen, a long player who can block shots and get rebounds. At power forward is Jabari Parker who's basically still a rookie. He tore his ACL after only 25 games. Very fluid scorer who can see time at the 4 as well as the 3. He could be backed up by Miles Plumley and Chris Copeland. Then the Greek Freak, Giannis Antetokounmpo at small forward. He's been improving and I expect him to improve even more. He averaged 13 points and 7 rebounds last season, while improving his field goal percentage and free throw percentage considerably. He can have some crazy plays like last season when a Euro stepped from the three-point line. Only 20 years old. Future all-star right there. Then there's Chris Middleton, a good young shooting guard. He averaged 16 points in the playoffs and shot 41% from three in the regular season. Backing him up is OJ Mayo, who apparently is in shape right now. He should be able to give them a boost off the bench. Then there's Jared Bayless behind those two. At point guard, there's the former Rookie of the Year, Michael Carter-Williams who came from the Sixers via trade at the deadline. He's then backed up by Gravis Vasquez, a solid backup point guard. This team is the future in the East. Still very young, but a lot of upside. Especially with Giannis and Jabari Parker. They have the potential to be multiple All-Stars in this league. Then there's MCW and Chris Middleton, who also have great potential. And Monroe isn't bad either. You wonder if they have enough 3-point shooting out there, because MCW is not a good 3-point shooter. But then again, the Bucks didn't have Parker and especially Monroe to attract double teams. We'll see how that goes this year. On defense, they have all the tools to be incredible defensively down the line. And even now, they ended last season second in defensive efficiency. One thing that will help them is their ridiculous length in the starting lineup. Let's take a look at it. MCW 6'6", Chris Middleton 6'8", Giannis 6'11". Parker 6869 and Monroe at 611. I really look forward to seeing them play. To finish things off, I'm not sure if they are a top 4 team in the East, at least for now. But I can see this team 2 to 3 years from now in the conference finals. They just have that kind of talent on the roster. This year, I can see them land anywhere from the 7th seed to the 5th seed. On to the next team. At 6th in the West, I have the Memphis Grizzlies. It's crazy that they are the 6th seed just shows how strong the Western Conference is. The Grizzlies finished last season in the 5th seed with 55 wins and 27 losses, only a game out of the 2nd seed. The best results the Grizzlies have had came in 2013, back when they made the Western Conference Finals. With the core they have today, Gasol, Randall and Conley, they eventually got swept by the San Antonio Spurs. Let's see the moves the Grizzlies made this summer. They drafted Gerald Martin at 25 and Andrew Harrison at 44. Other players they got were Matt Barnes and Brandon Wright. Players they lost were Costa Kufus, Nick Kalethis and John Luer. No big additions really, a few role players come and go here. Let's see how the rotation might look like according to ESPN. In the middle there's Marcus Gasol, who to me is the most skilled center in the NBA. High IQ on both ends, efficient and really took a step forward last season. He could be shooting threes this year. If there's anything to the video that shows him knocking down 19 out of 25 three-pointers during an open practice for the Grizzlies, at least we know he's capable of shooting that shot. He'll then be backed up by the human poco stick Brandon Wright. 
Then at power four, there's Sibo, who just turned 34. But it's okay, because he has that old man game, so he hasn't declined much. I'm pretty sure when he goes to the bench, that Jeff Green will get a lot of those minutes at the four. But Jeff will start at the three. He came from the Celtics in a trade, averaged 13 points in 30 minutes. I think he can contribute more in the coming season. He's gonna be important for the Grizzlies' success. He could be backed up by Matt Barnes. He'll add even more toughness and defense to the already tough Grizzlies roster. Then there's also Vince Carter who could see minutes at the 2 and the 3. In the backcourt there's Courtney Lee who will bring defense and 3 point shooting. With Tony Allen behind him who was on last year's NBA All Defensive First Team. Next to him is Mike Conley, a really good point guard. One of those guys that's all star caliber but doesn't get in because the West is so stacked at that spot. The Grizzlies are pretty much the only team in the NBA that plays old school basketball, the back to the basket game, and they take their advantage of it. This team to me has always been a 3 point shot away from being a legit title contender. The Grizzlies were 29th and 30th in 3 pointers made and attempted, which is crazy, considering that they have Randolph and Gasol down low. The two of them could do even more damage with good spacing, but they haven't been able to create that spacing the past few years. The Grizzlies are a tough defensive team and finished third in defensive efficiency. No team in the Western Conference will want to face them in the first round. They can vary down. DeMarcus Cousins said, they were the only team that would make you soar the day after. To finish things off, this could possibly be the make or break year for the Grizzlies. That is, if they're ever gonna win the title. I think they can finish all the way from the 6th seed to the 3rd seed. Playoff success could depend on their matchups. It's not impossible for them to make the finals, but I do not expect it. That's it for now. Like, subscribe and peace.